5.1.3 Information Security Management Key Message The purpose of the information security management practice is to protect the information needed by the organization to conduct its business. This includes understanding and managing risks to the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information, as well as other aspects of information security such as authentication, ensuring someone is who they claim to be, and non-repudiation, ensuring that someone can't deny that they took an action. The required security is established by means of policies, processes, behaviors, risk management, and controls, which must maintain a balance between prevention ensuring that security incidents don't occur, detection rapidly and reliably detecting incidents that can't be prevented, correction recovering from incidents after they are detected. It is also important to achieve a balance between protecting the organization from harm and allowing it to innovate. Information security controls that are too restrictive may do more harm than good or may be circumvented by people trying to do work more easily. Information security controls should consider all aspects of the organization and align with its risk appetite. Information security management interacts with every other practice. It creates controls that each practice must consider when planning how work will be done. It also depends on other practices to help protect information. Information security management must be driven from the most senior level in the organization, based on clearly understood governance requirements and organizational policies. Most organizations have a dedicated information security team, which carries out risk assessments and defines policies, procedures, and controls. In high-velocity environments, information security is integrated as much as possible into the daily work of development and operations shifting the reliance on control of process towards verification of preconditions such as expertise and integrity. Information security is critically dependent on the behavior of people throughout the organization. Staff who have been trained well and pay attention to information security policies and other controls can help to detect, prevent, and correct information security incidents. Poorly trained or insufficiently motivated staff can be a major vulnerability. Many processes and procedures are required to support information security management. These include an information security incident management process, a risk management process, a control review and audit process, an identity and access management process, event management, procedures for penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, etc., procedures for managing information security related changes such as firewall configuration changes. Figure 5.3 shows the contribution of information security management to the service value chain, with the practice being involved in all value chain activities, plan information security must be considered in all planning activity and must be built into every practice and service. Improve information security must be considered in all improvement value chain activity to ensure that vulnerabilities are not introduced when making improvements. Engage information security requirements for new and changed services must be understood and captured. All levels of engagement, from operational to strategic, must support information security and encourage the behaviors needed. All stakeholders must contribute to information security, including customers, users, suppliers, etc. Design and transition information security must be considered throughout this value chain activity, with Effective controls being designed and transitioned into operation. The design and transition of all services. Must consider information security aspects as well as all other utility and warranty requirements. Obtain slash build information security must be built into all components, based on the risk analysis, policies, procedures, and controls defined by information security management. This applies whether the components are built internally or procured from suppliers. Deliver and support detection and correction of information security incidents must be an integral part of this value chain activity. Figure 5.3 Heat Map of the Contribution of Information Security Management to Value Chain Activities 5.1.4 Knowledge Management Key Message the purpose of the knowledge management practice is to maintain and improve the effective, efficient, 
and convenient use of information and knowledge across the organization. Knowledge is one of the most valuable assets of an organization. The knowledge management practice provides a structured approach to defining, building, reusing, and sharing knowledge, i.e. information, skills, practices, solutions, and problems, in various forms. As methods of capturing and sharing knowledge move more towards digital solutions, the practice of knowledge management becomes even more valuable. Figure 5.4 Heat Map of the Contribution of Knowledge Management to Value Chain Activities It is important to understand that knowledge is not simply information. Knowledge is the use of information in a particular context. This needs to be understood with both the user of the knowledge and the relevant situation in mind. For example, information presented in the form of a 300-page manual is not useful for a service desk analyst who needs to find a fast solution. A better example of knowledge that is fit for purpose might be a simplified set of instructions or reference points that allow the analyst to find the relevant content quickly. Knowledge management aims to ensure that stakeholders get the right information, in the proper format, at the right level, and at the correct time, according to their access level and other relevant policies. This requires a procedure for the acquisition of knowledge, including the development, capturing, and harvesting of unstructured knowledge, whether it is formal and documented or informal and tacit knowledge. Figure 5.4 shows the contribution of knowledge management to the service value chain, with the practice being involved in all value chain activities. Plan knowledge management helps the organization to make sound portfolio decisions and to define its strategy and other plans, and supports financial management. Improved this value chain activity is based on an understanding of the current situation and trends, supported by historical information. Knowledge management provides context for the assessment of achievements and improvement planning. Engage relationships at all levels, from strategic to operational, are based on an understanding of the context and history of those relationships. Knowledge management helps to better understand stakeholders. Design and transition as with the obtained slash build value chain activity, knowledge of the solutions and technologies available, and the reuse of information, can make this value chain activity more effective. Obtained slash build the efficiency of this value chain activity can be significantly improved with sufficient knowledge of the solutions and technologies available, and through the reuse of information. Deliver and support ongoing value chain activity in this area benefits from knowledge management through reuse of solutions in standard situations and a better understanding of the context of non-standard situations that require analysis. 5.1.5 Measurement and Reporting Key Message The purpose of the measurement and reporting practice is to support good decision-making and continual improvement by decreasing the levels of uncertainty. This is achieved through the collection of relevant data on various managed objects and the valid assessment of this data in an appropriate context. Managed objects include, but are not limited to, products and services, practices, and value chain activities, teams and individuals, suppliers and partners, and the organization as a whole. Many of these managed objects are connected, and so are their respective metrics and indicators. For example, to set clear objectives for measurement and reporting, there is a need to understand organizational goals. These can be based on a number of areas, profit, growth, competitive advantage, customer retention, operational-slash-public service, etc. See the focus on value-guiding principle in section 4.3.1. In such cases, it is important to establish a clear relationship between high-level and subordinate goals and the objectives that relate to them. For the set goals, operational critical success factors, CSFs, can be defined. Based on these CSFs, a set of related key performance indicators, KPIs, can then be agreed upon, against which success can be measured. Definitions Critical success factor, CSF, a necessary precondition for the achievement of intended results. Key Performance Indicator, KPI, an important metric used to evaluate the success in meeting an objective. 5.1.5.1 KPIs and Behavior KPIs for individuals can work as a competitive motivator, and this will drive positive results if the KPIs are set to meet clear business goals. 
However, target setting for individuals can also have a negative side, driving inappropriate or unsuitable behaviors. This typically happens if there is too much focus placed on individual KPIs. For example, service desk staff might be heavily driven to keep calls short, but this can negatively impact on customer satisfaction and even resolution times if issues are not properly dealt with. Operational KPIs should ideally be set for teams rather than focusing too closely on individuals. This means that there can be some flexibility in the targets and behaviors allowed by the team as a whole. Individuals will, of course, still need some specific guidelines for their performance, but this should be clearly within the goals of the team and organization, and all targets should be set in the context of providing value for the organization. 5.1.5.2 Reporting Data collected as metrics is usually presented in the form of reports or dashboards. It is important to remember that reports are intended to support good decision-making, so their content should be relevant to the recipients of the information and related to the required topic. Reports and dashboards should make it easy for the recipient to see what needs to be done and then take action. As such, a good report or dashboard should answer two main questions. How far are we from our targets and what bottlenecks prevent us from achieving better results? Figure 5.5 shows the contribution of measurement and reporting to the service value chain with the practice. Being involved in all value chain activities, plan measurement and reporting enables strategy and service portfolio decisions by providing details on current performance of products and services. Improved performance is constantly monitored and evaluated to support continual improvement, alignment, and value creation. Engage engagement with stakeholders is based on correct, up-to-date, and sufficient information provided. In the form of dashboards and reports, design and transition measurement and reporting provides information for management decisions at every stage before going live. Obtain slash build the practice ensures transparency of all development and procurement activities, enabling effective management and integration with all other value chain activities. Deliver and support ongoing management of products and services is based on correct, up-to-date, and sufficient performance information. Figure 5.5 Heat Map of the Contribution of Measurement and Reporting to Value Chain Activities 5.1.6 Organizational Change Management Key Message The purpose of the organizational change management practice is to ensure that changes in an organization are smoothly and successfully implemented, and that lasting benefits are achieved by managing the human aspects of the changes. Improvements invariably require people to change the way they work, their behavior, and sometimes their role. Regardless of whether the change is to a practice, the structure of the organization, related to technology, or is the introduction of a new or changed service, people are essential to the success of the change. The organizational change management practice aims to ensure that everyone affected by the change accepts and supports it. This is achieved by removing or reducing resistance to the change, eliminating or addressing adverse impacts, and providing training, awareness, and other means of ensuring a successful transition to the changed state. Organizational change management contributes to every part of the SVS, wherever the cooperation, participation, and enthusiasm of the people involved are required. For an improvement initiative to be successful, no matter what the level or scope of the change is, there are certain elements that are essential to addressing the human factor. Organizational change management must ensure that the following are established and maintained throughout the change. Clear and relevant objectives to gain support, the objectives of the change must be clear and make sense. To the stakeholders, based on the context of the organization, the change must be seen to be of real value. Strong and committed leadership, it is critical that the change has the active support of sponsors and day-to-day -day leaders within the organization. A sponsor is a manager or business leader who will advocate and can authorize the change. Leaders should visibly support and consistently communicate their commitment to the change. Willing and prepared participants to be successful, a change needs to be made by willing participants. In part, this willingness will come from the participants being convinced of the importance of the change. In addition, the more prepared participants feel they are to make the changes asked of them through relevant 
training, awareness, and regular communications, the keener they will be to go forward. Sustained improvement, many changes fail because, after some time has passed, people revert to old ways. Of working, organizational change management seeks to continually reinforce the value of the change through regular communication, addressing any impacts and consequences of the change, and the support of sponsors and leaders. The communication of value will be stronger when metrics are used to validate the message. 5.1.6.1 Activities of Organizational Change Management The key activities of effective organizational change management are outlined in Table 5.2. Table 5.2 Organizational Change Management Activities Activity Creation of a Sense of Urgency Stakeholder Management, Sponsor Management, Communication Empowerment, Resistance Management, Reinforcement helps to deliver Clear and relevant objectives, willing participants. Strong and committed participants. Strong and committed leadership. Willing and prepared participants. Prepared participants. Willing participants. Sustained improvement. The activities of organizational change management interact with those of many other practices, particularly continual improvement and project management. Other practices with important links to organizational change management include measurement and reporting, workforce and talent management, and relationship management. The various audiences affected by the change must be identified and their characteristics defined. Not all people will respond to the same messaging or be motivated by the same drivers. It is particularly important in organizational change management to take cultural differences into consideration whether they are based on geography, nationality, corporate history, or other factors. Unlike other practices, accountability for organizational change management cannot be transferred to an external supplier. Someone within the organization itself must be accountable for organizational change management, even if the execution of some or most of the organizational change management activities is delegated to other people or groups including suppliers. External expertise may, however, be sought to supplement the organizational change management capabilities of an organization. Sometimes organizations struggle with the key skill sets needed for organizational change management and can benefit from the support and guidance of an external supplier. Even if external help is used, the overall leadership support must still come from the organization itself. Figure 5.6 shows the contribution of organizational change management to the service value chain with the practice being involved in all value chain activities. Figure 5.6 Heat Map of the Contribution of Organizational Change Management to Value Chain Activities Plan decisions regarding change at the portfolio level cause the initiation of organizational change management to support an approved initiative. Improve without proper organizational change management, improvement cannot be sustained. Engage, the organizational change management practice actively engages with stakeholders at all stages of a change. Design and transition organizational change management is essential for the deployment of a new service or a significant change to an existing one. Obtain slash build organizational change management ensures engagement and cooperation within and across projects. Deliver and support organizational change management continues during live operations and support to ensure that the change has been adopted and is sustained. 